Hey everybody, I uh, thought I'd provide a little update on my Arduino uh, lockdown uh, artificial horizon prototype. I started this a couple of weeks ago, bored like everybody else, stuck at home and thought I would see how easy it is to throw one of these together and was surprised at how easy it is to get the you know basic display working. Um, but uh, since then I've, I've done a little bit more work on it and I thought I would share some of that with you. Um, just as a recap, this is uh, based on a Arduino um, Nano with a BNO55 uh, uh, um, IMU accelerometer, uh, gyroscope, etc. from Bosch. Excellent piece of work there. And a little WaveShare uh, 128 by 128 bit OLED. And as you can see, reading the... Uh, gyroscope and accelerometer to get the appropriate data, draw an artificial horizon, uh, three or four lines, a little fixed uh, aircraft gull wing in the center, um, a heading based on the uh, magnetic heading, and even a uh, slip and a slip and uh, um, a slip indicator at the bottom, which is basically a um, like the ball that you see in those uh, little tubes in an aircraft. Anyway, um, I got a number of questions. Actually, I got four or 5,000 people looked at it, which I thought was kind of interesting. I was very surprised. But then I got a, a, an interesting question because one of the first things that I said when I, when I posted this was, you know, don't use it in a, in a real airplane uh, um, because I don't want to be sued if you, you know, pop, pop this in an airplane and fly into a cloud and, you know, get hurt. Um, but it occurred to me, you know, what, what sorts of things do you need to do to make something like this actually safe um, and, and usable? So forget the legalities for the moment because there are all kinds of legalities to build aircraft instrumentation and you know what's required. But it's no different than, than trying to build um, any other kind of device on which people's life have to depend. And then there's software all around the world today, uh, banking systems, uh, um, hospital uh, aircraft control systems, air traffic control systems, uh, medical equipment that, that your life depends on one way or another. And so how do we go about doing that? So I thought, well, okay, let, let, let's take a look at a couple of those things in this context, because just getting the display to work and reading the gyroscope, well, that's the easy part. Hard part is would be to make something like this extremely reliable and something that you could you could depend on. So for getting the hardware for a moment, because the hardware has has certain requirements uh, that, that that this hardware doesn't doesn't meet, like temperature uh, has to be able to operate in, in 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 lower temperatures and higher temperatures and so forth, in order to function in a in an aircraft. But um, we take a look at the the, the sort of the, the fundamental goal uh, of an instrument like this is either it provides you information which is correct, uh, which you can rely on, or it provides you no information whatsoever. In other words, it just it just switches off and provides you. If it can't provide you reliable information, it's better if it switches off than to to mislead you, because the worst thing that can happen is you know you imagine you're you're flying along in cloud and this is the thing that you're using to decide whether you're right side up, um, but you're actually turned, or you're rolling, but but you can't you can't tell by by looking at the screen because the screen has frozen for some reason. So. The, the device has to be able to um, tell you that it's broken. It has to be able to audit itself and know that it's not working. So one of the uh, easiest ways to do that um, with a piece of software um, to make sure that it's not hung or, or, or frozen is something called a watchdog timer. So I thought I would um, share with you, uh, I implemented a little watchdog timer uh, in Arduino using a, um, a nice little um, library function uh, called a timer interrupt, which allows you to install uh, interrupts on, uh, on, on timers um, and to implement a, a watchdog. So I'll just turn this around, see if I can switch this around and show you. So here's the, here's the basic concept. Um, we create a, a, a function, an interrupt service routine, um, which is going to be called uh, at a fairly high frequency, in, in this case, you know, once every half second. Um, and what it does is it runs continuously. Um, it increments a counter or decrements a counter, it really doesn't matter, and looks for a limit to be exceeded or for some, some threshold to be reached, at which point it decides it's time to die. 
right? In other words, um, the main loop is not responding, and so it is now time to die. So in this case, down in the bottom of my code here, if we go into the main loop, we can see I am, every time I go through the loop, I'm resetting a counter. Um, and then every time this interrupt occurs, I am incrementing the counter. And as long as the loop is running, the, uh, the counter will always be re reset to zero. The counter will never exceed um, my limit here, which is three. But if for some reason the loop hangs, let's say one of the I2C uh, uh, functions gets blocked or, or one of the devices decides not to respond or my code uh, goes into Never Never Land, um, it will execute this, this code. And, and here what I'm doing is I'm turning off the LED uh, the OLED, and uh, also this is a little trick to get the uh, Arduino to crash and reset itself, which is to declare a void uh, pointer to a function and then call the function indirectly. In other words, you're, you're calling a function at zero, which on a lot of machines will cause a cause a hard reset. Mm -hmm. So what happens in 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 the um, actual in the actual execution of the uh, of the device is if if something hangs, um, it just automatically uh, resets. Um, which, like I said, is better than having it sit there displaying a uh, um, an invalid response. Um, here's how you um, attach the interrupt. Um, you, you literally declare the the object, the timer, uh, initialize it, and then attach the interrupt service routine uh, to it. Um, there's nothing. There's nothing much to this. This is a very very simple little um, piece of code. Um, this is the timer interrupt library. Um, I forget the authors of it, but it's a, a very nice piece of work, uh, very easy to use. You just declare the timer that you want to use, include it, and um, you can have a watchdog timer on your code. So if you're building any kind of a robotic device or anything that's got any uh, um, interactions with the real world uh, that's important, then, then having a watchdog timer is a way to uh, detect that something's gone wrong and add another level of reliability to your project is is a good thing. And this is something that you would see in, um, you know, um, medical software and aircraft software and telecommunications software. This is a, a fairly common last resort. Um, but obviously that that's no substitute for good coding and very careful checking of uh, all the devices and making sure that they're they're functioning properly and and um, responding to them correctly but but you can go you can you can add a, a, another level of reliability to your uh, to your devices uh, by doing this I'll take a quick look at, at what that um, actually translates to in terms of the display um, well, for example, I can uh, pull one of my uh, one of my serial lines here, and it only takes a second or two, and, and boom, it's gone, it's reset. Um, whereas before, I'd pull that line, and it would just sit there, saying that everything was fine, you know. Um, so I mean, these are these are you know um, simple things that you can do. Um, make make your project more reliable and a little bit closer to what. A professional um, piece of equipment would would do in the in the real world, um, but as I said, the the hardware itself also has uh, requirements that um, I'm not sure that the Arduino um, boards do support. But um, uh, anyway, there are probably hardened versions of it. I'm not all that familiar with all the different hardware types. Anyway, there's a little bit of information that that perhaps some people will find useful. And thanks again to the, you know the folks that writing all these 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 wonderful libraries make this kind of thing far far easier than you know when i was um straight out of university and, and trying to build these sorts of things it was a hell of a lot more work than it is today and you'd be able to throw something together that sort of functions in just a few hours is is hellishly impressive anyway happy lockdown everyone hope you find this uh, useful and uh, enjoy and as i said the code is still up on the uh, github and i'll keep playing with it a bit